This is a video about dot plots and box plots, which could come up in the math or the science GED. So here is a fairly easy question that I put together just to sort of um, give you an example of a dot plot. So the question is based on the dot plot above, which of the following is true? So before we dive into this, let's just look. So what each dot represents in this case is an individual or a person. So it just says individuals in each category. We don't know what the categories are. They're A, B, C, D, or E. But this represents five individuals or five people who are in A, three individuals are in B, and then three, four, five, six, seven in C, and so on. Okay? So where some people make mistakes is they think these are bars. It's just kind of a weird bar graph. Um, and that's not necessarily, it's kind of like a bar graph, but you can actually determine it. So notice there is no value over here on the y-axis. It's because you can count to determine what the number is instead of having to, you know, what you typically do with a bar graph, which is come to the, to the y-axis and look at where it is. So if we look at these questions here, it says A is there are five individuals in 25 categories. Um, well, no. It's If we look at B, it says there are 25 total individuals in five categories. So yes, if you were to add up all of these, each one of these dots represents an individual, and there are 25 individuals. Um, and so this one sounds correct. Let's just make sure. Let's go to C. There are two more individuals in category B than category E. No, we have three individuals in B and two in E. So that's a difference of one, not two. D, it says it is not possible to determine the number of individuals. Um, no, you can. You can actually count them. Um, and so the correct answer in this case is um, B. All right, so that's how you do dot plots. Let's, let's make a dot plot, and this could be something that you would uh, be asked to do on the GED as well. So it says create a dot plot out of each of the, of the following data sets. So we have the number of players, um, and then over here is the number of goals they scored each season. So in other words, we have five players, uh, let's assume it's a soccer team, uh, who scored zero goals. We have six players who scored one goal. We have five players who scored two goals. We have one player who scored three goals, and so on. So for here, for the uh, it says the number of goals players scored in a season, we need to put five dots here. So one, two, three, four, five. For one, we will put six dots. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, shoot. I wanted that to look like it was one more, but um, hopefully you get to. And so for two goals, it'll be five. So one, two, three, four, five. There you can tell. Um, and for three goals, we have one. Four goals, we have four. One, two, three, four. Five goals, three. One, two, three. Six goals, two. And seven is one. So that would be the dot plot. So let's see what else we can learn from this okay so here is all of the data so there were 27 players that means i just put down 27 dots so that could be a question and sometimes if you're looking at the dots students will oh geez you know you well you count the dots to determine the number of players what about the number of goals scored well you would have to effectively um kind of multiply these out and then add them in a way. Or you could do what I've done here, which is write them all out and add them, all right? But you could do five times zero up here, and that means zero, right? Six times one, we have six goals here. Five, to, five if five players had two, then that's they represent 10 goals here. One player had three, four players had four, that represents 16 and so on. Until you add them all up, you get 69. Okay, so there's a lot of information that can come from these dot plots. That's why you're uh, likely to see them on the GED. So there's something else I want to reveal, which is the box plot of this. And so here's the data set. 
And these box plots, what they represent is this right here represents the lowest value. Okay, the zero right here represents the low. That's because we had five players who scored zero points, zero goals. Over here, this represents the highest. And it's at seven because we had one player score seven goals. All right. If you were to find the median of this, if you were to take half of these um, and the other half, the median value, the 50th percentile, is two. So that means the median uh, player scored two goals. Okay, and that's, uh, if I had to guess, I don't know, probably that one. Um, but right here, this represents the 25th percentile. So what that means is um, if, if you count like 24% of people scored less than one goal and 26% of people scored more than one goal. I mean, it might not be that way because um, there are some individuals that might have also scored one goal, but it's still just in general, the, 20, the 25th person out of 100 would have scored one if we were to extrapolate this data, okay? And same here, this is the 75th percentile. All right, so we'll do another example of these and hopefully this will be a little bit clearer. All right, so here is what is the range of preschool children uh, depicted in the box plot below? All right, so this is pretty typical. I know it's really small here. It just says age of kids in preschool, all right? And you have enough information to answer these questions. So what this, again, represents is the lowest number. So the low, we have a two-year-old in this preschool, okay? And then over here, the highest kid is a seven-year-old. So um, the range is seven minus two, which is five. Okay, so that's the answer, but let's see what else we could learn from this. So I made this box plot out of this data which I think is somewhat important so that you can kind of see, well, what, where, where did this come from? What does all this represent? And this represents, um, as I said, this is the 25th percentile and this is the 75th percentile. And I have those here behind this box, okay? Um, the median, which you might be asked to see, is right here where that line is. So that represents the 50th percentile. And so notice there, you cannot determine the average from this or the mean. We can determine the median, we can determine the high and the low, but we can't determine the mean. If, you, if you're given the data, of course you can do it. But what you can determine is the middle 50, all right? This is the middle 50. So that's what this box represents because if you take, you know, the 75th percentile minus the 25th percentile, you get... 50% of the data. So half of the data falls within this range. All right. And so that's kind of in a way where the bulk of your data is, you know, because you only had two two year olds, three three year olds, but loads of five year olds, loads of six year olds, and four four year olds. So I hope that this helps um, you with both dot plots and box plots. These are the two areas that I find students need the most work on. So please try to find some practice on these two particular types of diagrams. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video if you found it valuable and subscribe if you would like to see more videos like these. Visit the link below to passthegd.org to see more videos and learning opportunities that will help you get the highest passing score on the GED. And good luck.